I'll tell you guys, these childhood diseases just wreak <laughs> havoc on us adults. So, uh, the whooping cough is hopefully getting a little bit well, better. It's, it's, but, a, it's, a, bit, it's a serious uh, thing. It's worse, actually. In adults, you know, yeah, it's for adults. Much, 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 much worse. All right, gentlemen, here we go. Are we ready? Yeah. All right, in three, two, one. Ferguson, Missouri erupts while 37 other states protest peacefully. Dario reports on Mexico's search for the 43 missing teacher trainees. And the hashtag Cameron Must Go trends on Twitter. Is UKIP for real? And we find out why the chicken crossed the road in this happy Thanksgiving holiday edition of the Three Muckrakers podcast. Stay right here. Hello and welcome to the Three Muckrakers podcast for Friday the 28th of November 2014. It's the day after Thanksgiving in the USA and the perfect time to drag this podcast and your swollen turkey-filled being into the Black Friday shopping malaise where there's no better way to quietly cope with what's going on around you than listening to the dulcet tones of the Three Muckrakers. Um, my big point this morning, gentlemen, Coca-Cola is about to sell milk. <laughs> milk of cola will hit the market soon. It'll be 30% more expensive. Now this worries me on a whole bunch of levels because first they, you know, they've obviously got the control of the fizzy drink market. And then they bought Dasani, which is the bottled water. Now they're moving into milk. I mean, if corporations take over everything liquid that we consume, um, do we run the risk with water being so dear in so many parts of the world of it becoming a real issue? Yeah, I mean, it's so expensive as what it's going to be. So expensive, so much more expensive than normal bottled milk. I mean, what's all that about? Well, it's just branding, you know, the, the whole sort of uh, era of branding and commodification of, of everything. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, there is a shortage of water in different par parts of the world. It's going to be, become a real problem that in, in future. And how long before the air we breathe becomes, uh, mm. you know, branded by Coca-Cola or McDonald's? Everything's <laughs> becoming saleable, I think. Yeah, everything is indeed for sale. Speaking of for sale, there was a, a company called Blue Bottle. Uh, it's an artisanal coffee shop in Silicon Valley. And they just happen to have locations in all of the big high-tech companies. They, they actually are physically there. They just raised $45 million in funding, then they cut their employee benefits. Um, mm. Yeah, I was... Uh, dear, yeah. dear. I mean, you know, profits are meant to be supporting and helping people who buy the product and the staff. You know, I mean, it's incredible, really, that things like that happen. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's more, more evidence of politicians in the pocket of neoliberal capitalism. It's yeah, 40 years of deregu de deregulation, and with, especially in America, Dennis, uh, obviously there's a sort of philosophical difference in terms of not really seeing health healthcare as, as a human right as, as we tend to see over here. Although, you know, with the privatization of the NHS, thanks to the coalition, then uh, I think that's beginning to change also. There's also the definition of shareholders and stakeholders. Yeah. Um, you know, what I find happens here in Europe is that you, you as, as a corporation, you're much more focused on um, all of the stakeholders around you. That includes your employees, that includes the communities in which you serve. Whereas in the U.S., it's all about the shareholder and shareholder value and driving up the, the, the cost of the stock, which is, uh, I suppose, one measure. But it just seems so very, very strange. Mm. Well, it's so tedious, isn't it, really? Yeah. I mean, you've got to sort of support all the people within the com company and the and the shareholders and the profit makers the people who actually buy the products it's incredible well exactly and and you know there's another story that was in the news about university debt um you know now over a trillion dollars i i had a a, a person post a a picture on facebook that said basically they had you know borrowed twenty five thousand uh, us dollars for their education to date after school they had paid over 32,000 and yet they still owed 40 something thousand. Yeah, it's uh, incredible. And they, uh, there were the protests recently in London, I think it was last Thursday, which again, w w wasn't really covered in the media. And, uh, we're having this problem uh, over here now, you know, the increased marketization of, um, of higher education. And it, what's amazing to me is that the, the system that they've got over here hasn't paid for itself. So 
in a sense, there's still this kind of black hole in higher education funding, yet now we have a whole generation of students who are going into the, uh, going into the marketplace with 50 grand minimum of debt. And that is a long-term effect on uh, the, the economics of, of the country. So, you know, young kids, they can't buy houses, they can't buy cars, they're living at home. You know, it's a, it's a massive problem, which I think is going to come back to, to haunt um, society economically in, in the future. Yeah, well, I've, I've, I've got a vested interest in this because my daughter's just started at Brighton University. And what happens in Britain is you get a grant, which is um, a loan, according, a to loan. Your, according to your salary income. And obviously, we can't get that. Or she gets a loan, you know, and it's several thousand pounds, which she then has to pay back. The argument is that these are adults, you know, she is 19 and, you know, uh, it will, uh, a higher education and a degree, as you know, Daria, will give you a better job in theory in the marketplace. Um, after 20 odd years, you've got to pay it back. But the reality is that a lot of young people, you know, they want jobs in charities, which are maybe not very well paid. You know, I mean, where does that lie? What's the what's the society and community saying about that? If it's a good job, it's not very well paid. And, you know, they are doing jobs that maybe aren't very well paid. And as you say, Dario, you know, a lot of the time that will they will be um you know that they will not be able to buy houses and so forth and they will live off mum and dad i.e me and my wife the bank of mum and dad into they, they, their nev 30s. They, they never get off the payroll phil just, just <laughs> yeah. understand that they're never off the payroll oh completely. dear oh dear I mean, yeah, but I mean, it's the, the, the politicians don't seem to be able to make an argument for higher education being a good mm -hmm. thing socially and culturally. It's all about what does it benefit the, in, the, the individual in terms of, of, of getting that, a student getting a job at the end of their higher education. I mean, that's mm -hmm. really important. But in a sense, you know, having an educated society is, is very, very important in and of itself. Look at what Germany just did. I mean, exactly. they basically have said, look, if you want a university degree and you qualify uh, yeah. academically, the, the state will take care of that because they see the value of having an educated populace. I don't understand. There are certain things in life that are, uh, that are not designed for profit or for, for making money off of. And if we could teach that to the Republicans and the Tories, we'd be in a much better uh, world. And milk, milk's one of them. And milk is definitely one of them. <laughs> uh, listen, before we go to break, um, uh, we've we've had a, a real tragedy in the cricketing world. A, a young player, mm. 25, from mm. Australia, mm. died tragically after being uh, hit by a ball uh, that was that was bold, and it mm. did not hit him in the head, but it did hit him in the neck, and he uh, never regained consciousness. What well, tell us a little bit about it, Dario. Yeah, it's uh, Phil Hughes, this Australian cricketer. You know, it's a really, really sort of horrendous accident. Young player, he was, uh, you know, touted for greatness, greatness called the young Don Bradman when he was uh, when he was a kid. And yeah, it's I mean, it's intimidation and sort of uh, using these these sort of um, bouncer tactics has always been part of the game. But if you look at the way you know, the stories of crit cricketing depression and the sort of pressure that these players are under, maybe I don't know, maybe the rules need to be looked at again. But yeah, an absolutely horrific incident, yeah, really, terrible. really terrible. sad. And, and 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 to be fair, it was not caused by an opposing batsman in a test match. It was actually when he was in training. Yeah, our thoughts and prayers go out to his family. We're going to take our first break, and uh, we'll be back after this.